now we are going to look at is I think after we have understood what is e-commerce, the definition of it, uh, why this has emerged as a uh, as a way of doing business online. What are the various uh, you know types of models which can be used to uh, you know, sell products and services on so black services? We are going to get into something to understand. Why do businesses need e-commerce? Why do you think this has become a very important route or a medium in which businesses, uh, you know, can <laughs> So, any thought process on this? Any idea in terms of just very briefly looking at why do you think it is important for businesses to have e-commerce now? Any idea? Uh, so, why businesses have e-commerce? Um, so, like for example, like um, say if I'm if I'm a customer, if I want to get something, like I don't need to go to like a physical store or a big market store and just purchase something. I can just like order it online and just um, so that is the purpose of e-commerce. And it saves a lot of time, saves a lot of uh, you know, saves a lot of time. I would say it saves a lot of money too. That is the reason why you know e-commerce. That's you know. So that is quite relevant. That's that's a good point because um, it does away with intermediaries or different channels. You might not want to go out because it's convenient. So you have raised, you know, what you have covered, Rishwin, is a couple of points. And I'll quickly explain. So I think one of the points that you mentioned is that you do not need to step out and you can order them online, which is really convenience. If I look at right. what's going on. <laughs> the second point that you said is that in a way it allows you to you know, cut out the intermediary. You are going directly to what you want to buy. You are an informed consumer, and you need to you do not need to get education or you know maybe information on the product that you're buying, and you know exactly what right. to buy. So in that case, you can right, and you can do like instead of like like you talking over the customer, like you you just like put out your info like product A, and then you have your, your you have the information of, uh, on your. Um, uh, on the application, you know, I say website. Of, I mean, sorry, you can just say that um, that product. Um, you have the information, and people can just see it without you using. So. That is also correct because one of the ways uh, when we look at e-commerce, in particular, uh, added to convenience point that we've covered, is that it allows you to broaden your customer base. That means once you put and that product. And just that uh, anybody can just purchase it from anywhere, and you can just and you can provide worldwide shipping. You know, pe people from anywhere in the world can buy just, uh, and just not as to like anyone that's local. You know, anyone can just buy it. So. That's correct. So it allows you to broaden, or mm -hmm. you know, when I say broaden your so, allow to you are able to sell across different countries, and you know, increase your reach. So there are a couple of points there: convenience, reach, broadening your customer base, also looking at technology. And these are all advantages uh, which our businesses want to do today because the world is now a global village. Because of the internet, because of the connectivity which is enabled people to connect uh, you know, via telephone or you know, when we look at the uh, various mediums like social networks, like, like Facebook, you are able to quickly you know, um, send out a piece of information uh, at the click of a button. And because of this connectivity and the connected uh, you know, nature of our you know, world today, because of technology, we kind of, uh, I would say, in, uh, you know, wound in our daily, day-to-day -day lives, it allows us not just to send information, but to receive information. And then we understand that this has made you know, uh, this has given us lots of advantages, and these advantages translate into what we've discussed right now. Any, uh, you know, anything, Nathan, can you think of any point that you have come across when you've done a bit of sh online shopping, or the reason why you've done online shopping, or anything that you can think of? It's quite an environment where we have to see you are using any transportation to something, you have to raise that that is also correct so basically when you look at use of say online systems you are able to then you know if i understood you correctly you are able to then 
you know, go across to the consumer, not just by face-to-face -face route, but also, you know, through a virtual route. And that, that allows you to communicate, you know, interact with consumers and gain more customers, uh, literally. So you have customers which are in the real world, which buy, regularly buy, and you can have account management for them, or, you know, because they are big customers, you manage them quite well. But sometimes you have customers who come and buy one off. That they'll come and buy one off the way. And in that case, it allows you to, you know, so, in general, I think quite clear. I think both of you understand that we are looking at you know various benefits of e-commerce, which are uh, convenience, which are based. One of the points which uh, you also come across is that sometimes when you see offices work between nine to five, eight to six, or you know ten to five. But when you have a website and it has the ability to be able to sell products and you can put your products out there, it is actually available 24-7. You don't need to switch off your website. That website is available 24-7 and customers are able to come in at any time and buy things and products from you. And all it does is uh, requires you to you know, process the order uh, or dispatch the order if you have worldwide by shipping as has been said. And, you know, that again is very Is that okay? Okay. Some of the points that we've covered, things like, you know, expanding your customer base, opening your customer base is covered under things like global marketplace. When we look at the convenience, some of the convenience that we can attach as a parameter is 24 7 ready. You know, you can create a website that is available 24 7, 365 days a year, and it does not require anything in terms of uh, if the systems are set. That means an e commerce platform. When I say an e commerce platform, um, if I just pull out, say, e-commerce, uh, you know, e-commerce platform, <clears throat> and you look at, you know, uh, say, anything like the Zencart, one of the e-commerce platform is WooCommerce. So if you have this integrated on your website, what it can do is, and you've configured it well from an IT perspective, what I want to be able to do is, um, I can download this platform. Some of them are absolutely free. Some of them charge you an annual subscription, but when we have this platform, you can integrate it to our website, and once this is integrated, it does pretty much everything which, uh, which is how our system works in the store. You buy it. You go, you meet somebody, you the product, you pick it up, you bring it in the basket, and then you take it to the counter, you pay for it, I do it, it kind of cash, and then the customer, uh, the customer that it puts it in the bag, you does a bit of packaging and give it to you walk away from the store. But all that can be done electronically using a commerce platform like WooCommerce, Zendit, Shopify, there are lots of them. And that allows you know, this system to work seamlessly. You do not need any staff or employees. You need to process orders maybe once in a while. And that allows you to do the reports and everything in the background. And that allows 24-7 training. Don't need to work on this because it's able to be able to collect payment and then it is able to process orders. So you get an email in your email from the email that the customer has placed the order and what it does is that is uh, you need to go to and then dispatch it wherever the order has come from worldwide or to use a courier service. Now the other advantages that we talked about was that sometimes the running of these services is the cost of the are very low as compared to you know, the services which you run a store. So you're paying for rental cost, you have a staff, you have the electricity bill, you know, lots of admin costs and other things. But when you look at running something online, using an online store, some of these things are very different because you're not paying all those expenses. You're paying just only the expenses for hosting. You know? Hosting the store or you know the website, then the part of the transaction. And some part of the transaction will be primarily related to you know, which will be uh, like the payment gateway or things which are allowing you to you know understand um, uh, you know things which are uh, transaction. For example, if you have a Payment gateway like Google Checkout. 
you use one of these cards or you have to call my number as a Um just a quick one. Uh, can you mute your microphone if you're not going to be asking background noise? Hello? Yes, Vishwin. Yeah, sorry. Is this, uh, just some so wait, can you mute? Yeah, if you I don't know can you mute your microphone? My microphone? Yeah, you can can you mute yourself because I think there's a background noise. Uh, you can Listen. Yes. Sir. In your case, if you're if you if you have if you have a bit of a background noise, you know people behind you, then we can mute your microphone. When you want to ask questions, unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, I can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, okay. Basic this thing is when you have some of these gateways, the commerce gateways. What you will see is that these gateways also charge you some transaction costs, but these transaction costs are minimal. So when we look at PayPal, when we look at WooCommerce. You look at Shopify, you look at Google Checkout, you will see that some of these gateways charge you cost. But relatively running a store online is cheaper than having a physical presence wherein you're paying rental costs, employee costs, you know, administration expenses like electricity, water, gas, other things. And those are then not applicable in the case of, you know, when we look at uh, online platforms or when we use uh, when we use internet or websites, so that is one of the points when we say relatively low startup cost or running cost because you're not having the traditional expenses that you would have in a business when you run something on e-commerce or you know offer products and services through e-commerce. Now, what are the things which I'll ask you? When, which is the point called flow pricing? Sometimes you see, and you can unmute your microphones on this because I I would want a response from you. Is that sometimes you see when you go into a store, you see a price tag on a on a product, but if the pricing has to be changed, you know somebody has to physically go around and remove all those old price tags or stickers or change the pricing. But in the case of e-commerce, what typically happens is you can go onto the website, and one web administrator can actually just change the prices, and it immediately changes. The changes can be applied almost instantly as compared to, imagine if you go into a store and you have there, you have to change the price of the Tropicana juice, for example, and there are 500 cartons of Tropicana juice lying in the store. You have to physically go and change the pricing, you know, either on all the cartons or in some cases, if they are placed in an aisle, you will have to change physically the pricing of the aisle uh, to say that this is now on some sort of an offer. Now, when these kind of things have to be done, it becomes easier for businesses to do it online because they can be managed on the fly at a click of a button. But when you have to look at physical places, it becomes quite difficult, isn't it? Any thoughts on this issue? Yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah. So sometimes you will find the pricing, if it has to be changed, is easier to be done online than it's more of like if you're talking about price match. If you're talking yeah. about price match, then you know, yeah. then that'll be it. So sometimes when you go in into a store and you want to buy a product, what you normally do is you do a quick search, and when you do a quick search, you see that okay, this product is available cheaper in this particular store, and then what you yes. do is you that to the notice of the manager there, and they say okay, we'll do a price match, and uh, they end up revising the price on the website. And you know you are able to, you know, obviously get the product uh, at a cheaper cost. But the other way of looking at it would be the other side of the coin is that sometimes when you have to change prices, you have to put promotions on. It is easier having it done on the online because the web administrator can sit and actually change the prices quite quickly, as against if you are in a store and you have a lot of inventory lying and each of the individual price levels have to be changed. So again, the convenience factor comes in when I say fluid pricing. That means you're able to increase and decrease the price at a click of a button as against, you know, physically putting down labels on on, on all the products uh, if you were having these in a store or selling them from a shop or a store. Now, there are other advantages which are things like, you know, um, when we look at the uh, countries, there are uh, different countries which have adopted e-commerce and when we look at the adoption of e-commerce, there are developed countries which have this running for a number of years. And 
uh, you know, there are developing countries where the internet and infrastructure is now coming on online, and they are now having to realize that this is one of the benefits through which they can help consumers globally. And this is becoming an advantage as far as, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, business are concerned. And some of these slides have taken an example of, you know, um, uh, Australia, for example, and in this case, what I've done is I've basically looked at uh, the idea that the rate of adoption of e-commerce by small medium enterprises in Australia is slower as compared to some of the other developed countries like UK, Europe, US, Canada. Where in most companies, when they start businesses, one of the key things the management does is that they look at also creating an online presence or a website straight away for selling goods and services to consumers directly or to uh, businesses directly, rather than at a legal stage think about it that, okay, let me start the business traditional way and open a shop, open a presence, open an office, <coughs> and two, three years down the line, you know, create a website uh, through which we go. Now, there are lots of advantages that we've discussed. Let's look at some of the threats. What are the threats that you can think of which are posed by having or doing business online? Threats? Can you think of a few threats? Yes. <coughs> okay. Let's look at a few points for discussion. What are the what are the threats that you can see when a company or a business does business online? Absolutely correct. So when you look at websites, they can be hacked. When you look at different platforms with a lot of security implemented on it, like the security certificate, SSL, you know, they're having double padlock. Some of the websites being signed off by VeriSign. You will yeah, still yeah. They get hacked. And what tends to happen is if you look at security standards, uh, yeah, for sure. The end of the can cause for the profit market profit variation. Yes, when you look at uh, you know, come uh, again on that point. Sorry, nothing on that point again. was that when you look at websites, some of the security features on the website, what you're saying is can be compromised. it out on the chat window yeah. what, what you're trying to say just type it out on the chat window window is in the you know in the in this middle icon you see a chat icon an exclamation icon if you click on that uh, you can actually type yeah price fluctuation can cause profit variation okay this point nitin that you mentioned price fluctuation which can cause profit variation yes can happen this could be uh, something uh, this, uh, look at because when they price 
Okay, I'll address this point that you said is important. Let me address it to uh, giving you an example of the scenario. Sometimes you see that companies have different prices in the store and they have a different price online. Now, why do they have this? Is because sometimes companies have a lot of inventory at hand, and what they want to do is put those stocks in inventory quickly. So what they do is, in a particular place, when they are trying to sell the products to the store, they know that customers will not be able to get access to this information. So what they do is, they might place this product at a specific price in that location or through that store when they're selling it. But online, they might have a special promotional price. And this price fluctuation can uh, allow them to liquidate or sell inventory quickly. The second the price fluctuation versus liquidation, it could be because of change rate, which tends to happen. Uh, you know, when uh, if you are selling products internationally and you are pricing your products in dollar or pound or say a local currency, and when the exchange rate is applied, what you will see is depending on the exchange rate on that day. The price of the product, uh, you know, the profit on the product that you realize when you do the sale could actually be higher or lower. And that fluctuation could happen on the online platform because of, you know, fluctuation of uh, exchange uh, currency rates or because of the, uh, you know, exchange rates um, uh, which can happen on uh, currency because of trading internationally. <clears throat> I'm looking at addressing more risks on uh, what Rishwin, you said is, uh, uh, you know, in terms of what are the threats on the website. So one is it can be hacked. There is no doubt. Sometimes yeah. you get to hear that the data has been breached, you know, or hackers have got hold of data. Correct? Uh -huh. And when you say they've got hold of data, they also say that the data that they've got hold of is they've got hold of credit card details, personal details, yeah. and that, if it yeah. falls on them, can be used to do online transactions. Imagine if your credit card number and your uh, CVV code or your name and details, if it is uh, then you would not know whether this is being uh, used at what place, but because of which somebody can actually do transactions on your, on your behalf. Or the person that owns the website can actually do the transaction. Absolutely. So those are things that that's a major concern right here. I don't think profit is the concern, but the major concern is security. security <laughs> That's number yeah. one. That's great. Right. So, Nathan, you join back. I, I know that you were trying to make a point regarding price fluctuation and profit variation. So, what did you mean? Yeah. What do you mean by that? See, we are from the uh, uh, manufacturer. We purchase it from the manufacturer. <laughs> and we have we sell it to the retailers. Yeah, buying from the manufacturer, it has a certain price. Yes. But in future, you have product in your inventory, and manufacturing manufacturing unit or manufacturer has dropped the uh, particular product price. Uh, you in the loss while selling that product, but the manufacturer can or other sellers can. Then that is the most Yes, that is also correct. Yes, I understand your point. That's okay. That's fine. So sometimes you will see <clears throat> that this could also be a threat or a concern because uh, you know having e-commerce would mean that you know sometimes by the time you update your prices or other things, uh, you know the products or the orders have been serviced. And that could directly dent your profit as far as uh, you know the, uh, the sale is concerned. So that that is okay. So let's look at you know some of the other threats. Now we know in general the threats on you know online would be things like uh, when we talk about security feature, when we talk about identity theft, which is another point which Rishwin has mentioned. You look at your details being stolen, which is your credit card details being stolen, which can be used by you know unauthorized people. Two transactions. Your point of you know price fluctuation related to price manipulation. Sometimes you see. Or I would say, or I would say, social in the state, social security numbers can be stolen. People can just open credit cards under your name. Correct, correct. So this kind yeah, of a, would basically be looking at threats. Now we have seen a lot of malicious attacks which have happened. I think one of the things 
that we look at, you know, uh, uh, in the last couple of uh, years, uh, you know, which was a big hack which happened, um, you know, with hackers got away with, uh, you know, personal details and data. Or when Marriott Hotel, you know, servers were hacked. Now, this was a very big news because Marriott Hotel, which is a very big chain, you know, they had up to 500 million customers, guests, uh, or which have stayed at the hotel, their details were stolen. Now, if you understand hotel chain, like Marriott, you know, has tremendous advantages of doing e-commerce or having a website through which they can allow customers to book hotels or, you know, arrange overnight stays because it cuts out the channel. It allows the hotel to make more profits. In this case, also, you know, the other thing would be that some of these services uh, which Marriott wants to sell to customers can be customized using the website. So, for example, you book a room, they can upgrade you to an executive room at 20% premium. Uh, they can provide you other services like a pickup and drop from the hotel. And some of these things sometimes, you know, are not sold by tour operators and things like that. But when you look at e-commerce, for them, <clears throat> this is one of the biggest channels through which they get sales. And in order to minimize threat, what they do is they spend a lot of money every year on making sure that their website and some of the associated websites through which they sell are very safe. So when we talk about theft, when we talk about you know things like data breach and uh, you know hacking, what we are also looking at is some of these companies or organizations and businesses they also run something called loyalty programs, and if the data from these programs are stolen then it tends to create problems for, uh, you know, the, uh, for, for the business. What could be the problems? Number one could be reputation, loss of reputation, you know. And the reputation loss, that means if your data has been, uh, you know, taken and you receive an email, after this particular incident happened, Marriott contacted all the customers uh, that had stayed at the hotel for the last four years and they sent out apology letters or emails to them to say that, you know, though this has happened, but we'll try and minimize any damage or any, uh, you know, loss of information and restrict it to not being used again. But what it meant was that the company had lost a lot of reputation as far as, you know, this is concerned. So when we look at threats, we are looking at identifying, uh, you know, uh, issues which can happen when something goes wrong with your online presence or e-commerce platform. Now, there are lots of ways through which, you know, uh, these platforms can be affected. You think of ways which are, you know, things like you have phishing attacks, you have, uh, you know, um, bots coming onto the website. You sometimes also look at certain websites being continuously bombarded uh, from certain IP addresses, which takes the website or web, web services down. If you try and open a website, uh, you know, from different places and there's an organized attack happening on it. When I say organized attack means th there is a concerted effort by a lot of people to bring that website down uh, because it is not able to handle the data load or service that many customers. You will see sometimes you get errors, which are server 500 errors or, you know, 404 errors. Because if you're trying to find a page, like if I go to university website, let me show you a small error, uh, which can happen on, on a website, which, uh, which is our website. And these are also threats that sometimes, you know, can be exploited to get into what is called loopholes and uh, which allows them kind of a backdoor entry into, uh, you know, getting access to your data. In this case, for example, if I go to the website right now, and I search, for example, a page, and that page could be, I want to say, for example, search, um, say, we don't, I know we don't run courses on, let me give you a quick example. So we don't run courses on, say, sports management, right? Now, if I click on this, and I do a bit of a search on the website, it says no result found, you know? Please check for correctness. Now, if I try and find a course which has been published earlier, but that course or that page does not exist, what then can happen is that if I keep to, if I try and find that page time and again, what at some time will happen is that the website will give me a 404 error, and that would primarily say 
that this page does not exist. Now this, so for example, I'm trying to find a page and I can find it, but if I go to a particular page and we can't find it, what will happen is it will give me a 404 error. Now these kind of things can be used by hackers to go into a website and look for the cache. And when we look at that kind of attempts being done, what we normally see is it becomes a threat that this brings the whole service down. It brings the whole website down. And in those cases, you know, somebody's trying to spam, and this spamming typically tends to be, uh, you know, um, uh, being done from a point of view of uh, to bring that website down or to bring that website offline. And this is a threat. So there are lots of different types of threats that can be looked at when we look at, you know, having a presence online. And these threats could be hacking, this could be through phishing, could be attacks by bot, uh, by opening up pages or the uh, the source code, which then allows hackers to gain access to it, to, you know, uh, uh, get hold of data or, you know, uh, information, which actually should be kept safe and should not be, uh, you know, available to uh, normal users. Now, other threats could be what are called, what we have is sometimes you see in PCs, your PC or your Mac gets affected by virus. Or, you know, there are different types of viruses which are malicious programs essentially which, uh, when run on your platform, uh, you know, start passing or uh, providing information to third parties without you knowing about it. So one of the other threats that which can happen on the website is that if sometimes you see certain websites are trying to install Flash or, uh, you know, trying to install a particular software on it, uh, you know, they try and install viruses and those can also be damaging because that can either look at, um, they, they, these are trackers which will either look at, you know, getting hold of your information, they are able to track, uh, you know, your username, passwords, and in some cases, these informations then can be remotely passed on to a third person without you even knowing about it. So these are different types of threats which can actually happen when you have presence, you know, online. Is, is this quite clear or do you want me to go into a bit more detail and explain this? Sure, good. No. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, once we know that there is a lot of threat that is, is some, uh, you know, we can face different types of threat. At some stage, when you are a web administrator, the whole idea of me studying this is that if you are a technical point of view, that if you are an IT literate person, what we want to do is we want to minimize the threats that we can get you know, by uh, through the online route or when we set up an e-commerce gateway. And when we look at this e-commerce gateway in particular or some sort of a platform that we use, what we want to be able to do is look at certain techniques through which we can minimize these risks. How we can minimize these risks? We can minimize these risks by looking at implementing what are called security protocols. So, have you heard of the word security protocols? Yes, sir. So when I look at security for websites, if I look at this, you know, the first thing that you look at in certain websites is that they have something called the secure socket layer. Now, this secure socket layer is nothing but a bit of a padlock that you applied, as you can see on most websites. And these padlocks, you know, basically mean that the website has 128-bit encryption, and that means uh, you know, uh, we are, uh, you know, um, we are basically, uh, you know, applying some sort of a security feature on this website. So there are various features like SSL, you have encryption, you also have something called EDOS protection. And if I look at showing you that, just very briefly, because I think this is more visual unit. Now, DDoS protection is much more than a uh, you know, secure socket layer because here, as you can see, the whole website is protected because they are paying for an additional service which allows uh, the website to be authenticated. And this is an original Barclays domain and owned and run and monitored and, uh, you know, maintained by the company itself. It's a banking website. So as you can see, this connection is secure and it displays not just the, uh, you know, the padlock, but also displays something called the company name. Now, so there are various ways through which we are, uh, you know, looking at minimizing the effect of these threats which the websites face. So sometimes you will look at things like firewall, you look at, you know, um, uh, features like this implementation of 
uh, you know, DDoS service. You'll also look at, uh, you know, secure socket layer. You will look at, you know, having an antivirus or, you know, some sort of a software installed, which actually makes what is called uh, threats. And these kind of things will be installed on the platform allows us to minimize the risk with your platform faces. And these can be done through a couple of routes. So if I just summarize, um, you know, just look at quickly summarizing. So they can be minimized by using infrastructure tools. Uh, and what would be these tools? These tools could be software, hardware, or, uh, you know, things related to that. We can also minimize these risks by using specialist, you know, software. When I say specialist software, here I'm using software like an antivirus, you know, or a firewall. And these are specialized softwares that we can use. Then there are security features that you can implement. You know, security features. And these features could be SSL, DDoS. It could be features which are related to uh, you know, um, as for example, making your platform more and these security features are built in into sometimes some of the platforms that we use. So when we look at the nature of risks, you know, nature of risk, depending on the nature of risk faced, you know, by the company or the website, we can actually employ these different tools to minimize the threats which the e-commerce platform or the website actually faces. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yep. Now, <clears throat> one other quick uh, thing that I want to quickly discuss and close uh, with today's session would be, when we look at understanding, you know, why do companies need to deploy e-commerce at all? You know, why can, uh, what do you think the company cannot survive or the operation cannot survive if they do not have any e-commerce strategy or they do not have an online presence. Now, in some cases, it is becoming a necessity that if you do not have e-commerce presence, then your business is actually losing out. Right? Um, let's look at, uh, at taking an example to cover this particular part. Now, if I look at a particular company, um, say, let's think of, let's think of the government, for example. Now, why do you think most of the, uh, you know, developing countries, developed countries are now uh, having websites which are information websites? That means the government is also investing a lot of money to create portals or platforms where they are able to give out information to its citizens. The reason why they are doing it is, one, this platform allows easy uh, dissemination of information. Second, sometimes information which has to be passed on to people or citizens have to be passed on uh, from a point of view of a public domain. And when we look at that public domain, it is easier for them, cheaper for them to be able to pass this information on. And that is why, you know, they need to look at, uh, you know, to a certain extent, having this uh, strategy. The third is, as you look at the technologies, in, uh, you know, improving things, what is happening is that some of these things can be automated, like collection of VAT, collection of any sort of taxation. Like in the UK, uh, as an example, I would say the government is able to collect TV licensing fees, road tax, you know, uh, some of the other related as expenses, uh, you know, through the online route. And it is becoming important because these are transactions which are being done again and again. As the population is increasing, it is putting pressure on resources in the physical domain and having some of these done through, uh, you know, the online route or e-commerce route is becoming easier for the government to manage. So when you look at call centers, you look at automated calling systems. Sometimes you will see when you call the, uh, you know, call the department for a particular help, at some stage you will realize is that they take you through a particular number of options first, which could actually be through an operator. That, okay, do you want which department? Okay, in which department you have this query? then the person would transfer the call. But the automated call system is actually filtering you out on the basis of your query and then passing it to the relevant person to be able to save time. So e-commerce strategies have to be applied because it is making the way transactions or information is passed you know, easier. 
And from that aspect, what we not what we want to be able to see is that a lot of businesses today cannot do away with uh, not having a presence online if they sell products and services or provide information to consumers, uh, you know, on on that side. And that is what I've covered in you know some of these slides that I you know want to uh, share. That sometimes it is easier for a business or for a company to send out information to the website or through any commerce platform rather than you know uh, send it out in the post because it's not cost effective or send it out to a brochure or a leaflet and that requires other side of operations things like printing publishing then posting administration to be able to post that out rather than just publish simply on the website and then you know, send an email and it is available to everyone is that okay any questions on this Nitin so far That you have. Right. So what I'm going to do is send you a copy, updated copy of this presentation that we've gone through today because I think I'm going to refine this slightly. And also I'm going to send you a small handout to read which will actually cover, uh, you know, the, the benefits of e-commerce to business and why do businesses need to employ e-commerce strategies in today's uh, you know modern day uh, you know climate okay sir. okay and then, yes, sir. if you have any questions any queries just feel free to either drop me an email or uh, you know we will do a bit of a recap in the next session before we start learning out completely so you can ask me then yes sir okay so i'm going with this in this session today and uh, hopefully i'll catch up with you next week on uh, on, on Wednesday. Okay. okay, thank you and have a good weekend.